I do a lot of different things, and uh, as Mark pointed out, I'm an assistant professor of neurology at Johns Hopkins. I work at the Multiple Sclerosis Center and the Transverse Myelitis Center, and um, a big focus of my work is actually on rehabilitation of people who have multiple sclerosis and, uh, and other spinal cord disorders. And so, so Kathy was talking a little bit yesterday about the, the importance of, of exercise, of being as, as active as possible with, with, with MS. And uh, I would like to kind of take us to the next level and kind of try to explain to you why you should be doing all these things. Um, as she pointed out, the drugs that we have, and, and she did a fantastic job pointing out what these, what these are and what the problems with the drugs are, is all they can do, they, they can prevent from new inflammation from happening. But what the drugs don't do, they don't help you recover function that you have lost. And so, um, when I went to medical school, and it's now a while ago, uh, I was told that the nervous system is kind of one set of cells. So we're born with this certain number of neurons, we're born with a certain number of, uh, of cells that kind of support those neurons, and when one of them dies, then that's gone. I mean, we age with them and they don't replace, they don't replenish. But what we've learned the last 10 years or so is that these cells turn over constantly. Even in, in, the, in the able-bodied person, these cells have to re replenish themselves all the time. So, and where are they coming from? Most people don't know where they're coming from. And uh, everybody always goes out, you know, has diseases like multiple sclerosis, spinal injury, transverse myelitis, and thinks we have to go out to Spain or to South America and get stem cells somewhere to help us with the nervous system, just because of this very same thought that I had at the beginning that we only have a certain pool. But it's not true. We all have stem cells. And they, there are actually millions of them sitting in our spinal cords and brains, and they can technically repair any kind of tissue. I can take these cells out of your sac or your spinal cord. I won't take them. Yours usually do it from animals. <laughs> and uh, I can put them in a dish in my lap, and these cells will become any nervous system tissue that I want them to do. They become neurons, which are the wires. They become oligodendrocytes or oligos, which are the kind of the insulating cells, and and other support uh, cells. I take these cells, stick them back in the spinal cord, they don't do it. I take these cells and stick them in a part of the brain where they can make neurons, and they will make neurons. I take these cells, take them out of the brain, put them back in the spinal cord, they don't. And so that means there's nothing wrong with the cell itself. The cell is fine. It's just there's something wrong with the environment we put the cells in. And so, so there seems to be something in the spinal cord environment that prevents it from doing their job. And, uh, and so it took us a long time to figure out what is this? Because there is some repair happening in, spinal, in, in, in multiple sclerosis. Because as you know, if you have a relapse, you know, you, you lose a lot of function, but then over time things come back. And so, so these cells do their job, but, but very, very slowly, very, very inefficiently. And so it took us a long time to figure out what do these guys need to do their job. So number one, you have a stem cell that's sitting in your spinal cord. It has to recognize that you had an injury, that there wasn't in focus of inflammation. So the cell has to see where it is and then move there. So now it's sitting there. Now it actually, what connects that? It has to become out of the stem cell, which could become anything. It has to become a, a, a cell that can insulate, which would be an oligodendrocyte. So now it has to change in a way to become this. So now it's an oligodendrocyte, and now it has to actually figure out which of those wires is, is injured, which one should I fix. And so this is a very complicated process. And so what happens in, in MS, especially as you, as you go down the road, is that these cells still recognize that there's injury. So the stem cells are actually moving to the injury site, but then you're just usually just sitting there, and you're just watching, they don't know what to do. And so what we've learned is what the most important thing is that these cells need in order to see which wires they have to repair, these wires have to be active. If these wires are not actively firing, those cells can't see them, and they just sit there. So, so once you light up those wires, they can see them, now they become oligodendrocytes, and now they start fixing them. And so, but it's really hard, so how do we do this? So we know that exercise itself is great. So exercise, you know, the more active you are, the more you sort of light up those wires. Um, but it's not enough. So, because many of you know, many of you are active as, as, as they can. You know, you can go to regular, um, you know, you can go to the gym, uh, you, you can do aquatics exercises, you can do, um, you know, walking. It, it can start very simple. Um, but overall, most will 
experience a slow decline in function over time. Um, and so there is something more that you have to do in order to help with the repair. And so we, we, we developed the program about 10 years ago. And um, what we have learned is in order to activate these wires, the, the most efficient way that we have currently is using a modality that's called functional electrical stimulation, or FES. And I'll tell you in a second what this is. And once you sort of uh, use the electricity to kind of activate these nerves, now these cells can see them and they can repair. Um, I pointed out yesterday with, uh, with Kathy's talk that we just published a paper where we could, could show that we compared people who just get regular exercise versus people who get exercise plus electrical stimulation. Um, that you have about a 75% chance of looking the same in two years from now than you do today, and a 25% chance of actually looking better than that. And there's really no drug that has ever been shown uh, to do that. And so when, when we talk about electrical stimulation or functional electrical stimulation, what, what is this? So who has, who has ever heard the term? I know Kathy has. <laughs> uh, I know you have. <laughs> Anybody else? Okay. So a few, but the majority probably not. So what what this is is you know people who have had lesions, mostly probably in the, in the brainstem and spinal cord, where most of the disability is coming from in multiple sclerosis. The signals from the brain can't really reach the lower part of the body anymore. And so if you want to say I want to work really hard on my legs, but you can't really move your legs, you know that's a problem. And uh, you can have the, as most low power as you, as, you, as, you, as you want, but you can't activate those legs voluntarily. So but what we can do is we can help you activate these legs with a little bit of electrical stimulation. So what we do, we put electrodes on the muscles that are weak. Um, and then we, we can turn on these, elect these electrodes, which fire a small amount of electricity, but then make the muscle contract. When you do that, it sends a signal along the nerves from the muscle into the spinal cord and, and back. So now you activate the muscle, you activate the nerve, and you activate the whole spinal cord itself up to the brain. And so when you do that, you can actually move your muscles even if you don't have voluntary control over this. And electrical stimulation comes in, in various different sizes and, and, and shapes. So we, we have small units where you have like two electrodes, you can st stimulate one muscle or two muscles. All the way, and they, those things cost between $150 and, and $1,000, all the way up to equipment that can cost in the, in the mid 20s or mid 30,000s. And um, I know my friend over there, <laughs> just used to it <laughs> for, for, for the last three months. Um, so it's one of the most, Efficient devices that we have is, is the uh, FES bicycle, and you probably have seen it somewhere in the news or uh, in, in, in papers. Some, in some of the conferences, the, some of the companies are around, where you can actually put somebody who can't walk, who can't walk, and can't even use a bike on their own. So you, you roll them up to the, um, for example, with the wheelchair to the bike, and then we connect the muscles, like the, the quadriceps muscles, the hamstrings, and connect the glutes, and then a computer. Uh, sequentially fires each muscle in the right sequence. So now this person can actually ride that bicycle on their own muscle power. And when you do that, it fires a lot of activity in the spinal cord. So you build muscle mass, you build strength, you help with the, with the bone density in those muscles, so you fight osteoporosis, and you repair spinal cord when you do that. So over time, you will see how people get stronger and how they, how their function uh, improves. And even if you say, well, I not only have leg problems, but I also have arm problems, the same devices exist for the arms as well. So you can actually have one where you cycle with your, with your arms and with your shoulders. You can use it for your trunk and for anything. But I don't want people now go out uh, after breakfast, hey, I'm going to go buy one of these things, and then I'll, I'll use it. You actually need somebody to show you how to use this correctly. So this is not easy equipment to use. So you want somebody who is experienced in that, who can help you build a program for this. And this is also not something that you just go out and do for like, you know, for the next two weeks, and then we're done. <laughs> this is something, this is an immortality, like, like with exercise, like you take your pills. You know, you have to build exercise into your daily routine. And so, and so what we help usually in, in, in our center is, we build these programs that you can take home with you. And then at home, you follow these things along. 
as your function changes, as you improve, we update those things every couple couple times a year and send you back home with it. So you have to sort of this modality sort of has to build has to be built in, into your daily uh, routine. So, um, but overall, you can make a huge impact in your function. So I hope I get everybody sort of energized to you know, go out and exercise and maybe add an extra inch of actually give you the, the added benefit uh, of doing that.